The P-51D Mustang has become legendary as one of the most iconic fighter aircraft of the Second World War. Used in virtually every theatre of operations during that conflict, it even saw service beyond 1945 despite the advent of jet technology. That being said, following World War II, the United States had a surplus of these aircraft, particularly as they were beginning to replace their frontline fighter aircraft with more modern jet-powered types. Other countries bought various supplies of this surplus aircraft, one of those being New Zealand. The Royal New Zealand Air Force took delivery of their aircraft in the early 1950s and they were used primarily for training duties and air defence for about a decade with the Territorial Air Force. The Royal New Zealand Air Force roundels were simply painted over the American stars when they were delivered, to save time and effort, but over time more elaborate checkerboards were used to cover them up. Other than this, they pretty much retained the aesthetic they had from their previous United States service. Hey guys, Matt from Model Minutes here. Join me in this one as I build and review the Airfix P51D Mustang kit in 172nd scale. But this time I apply some aftermarket decals from Model Alliance to produce a Royal New Zealand Air Force Mustang 4. I've already built this Airfix kit in the paint scheme as included in the box, so if you'd like to see how that one was made, take a look at my build video on that topic, which you can find on my channel. The particular kit I have here was bought in a discount supermarket here in the UK, leading up to the Christmas period of 2019. There was a quality control issue on Airfix's part, which resulted in them adding the wrong decals to this kit. They were instead for a different Mustang with a blue nose and tail. I've already got that one in the stash, so I actually opted to use the decals from this kit on my custom X-Wing that I built last year. But that's not a problem because I'll be using these Model Alliance decals which I bought online. I will still use some of the Airfix decals as they have various warning labels and things which would be nice to add. Before I start the build, as always, please remember that adult supervision may be required when building model kits due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. Airfix recommends this kit to those aged 8 years and older. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. Throughout this build, I will cut the parts away from the sprue using either my cutters or a sharp knife. The excess plastic can then be sanded smooth using a file or carefully cut away. I removed the internal cockpit parts as this is the first bit that needs building and painting before adding to the fuselage halves. Revell contactor cement was used here as the needle applicator helps get the glue in the right places. I added the pilot's chair, then the control column. You'll notice that the control column has snapped in half. This is a running theme on this build with the small and fine parts. Airfix designed this kit fairly well, but went a little too thin on some of the components, which although look nice, it does result in them breaking when they are cut from the sprue. Not to matter, I simply glued them back together. This radiator component can then be added underneath the cockpit assembly. I can then cement the cockpit inside one of the fuselage halves. I used Vallejo Model Air US Light Green to paint the internal cockpit areas. This is one of my first experiences using this kind of paint. It's airbrush ready, so all I need to do is give it a shake and add it to my airbrush. I'm still learning how to get the best results of my airbrush, so I thought this would be a perfect kit to practice on. And speaking of trying new paints and things, the reason I can afford to do this is through the generous support of my patrons over on Patreon, and my channel members here on YouTube. A massive thank you to these guys. If you would like to join these people on screen and get the exclusive benefits including early access to videos and behind the scenes stuff, take a look at the links in the description on how you can become a patron or channel member. I sprayed this Vallejo paint on all the internal areas including the wheel wells and cockpit areas. A few coats would be needed, leaving time between each layer to allow it to dry. I cemented the clear gun sight part onto the cockpit control panel. 
In hindsight, I should do this after I've added the decal, but you'll see why shortly. Humbrol 33 matte black acrylic was thinned with Tamiya Acrylic Thinners X20A. This will help it flow and avoid leaving brush strokes. I painted the control panel and gun sight, making sure I left the reflector at the top unpainted, as in real life that would be clear. Humbrol 26 matte khaki was painted carefully onto the pilot's headrest. You'll be able to notice that I've already picked out some of the controls and instruments inside the cockpit with the same black paint I used in the previous step. I applied the control panel decal using my normal process, cutting the decal from the sheet, soaking it in warm water to release it, and then sliding it into place. I brushed Humbrol decal fix onto this part to help soften the decal. Here you can see the problem with adding the gun sight. It's in the way of the decal so I had to cut it slightly to get it to fit properly. Had I added the decal first, then the gun sight, I could have avoided this whole issue. With that done, the control panel can be cemented into the cockpit. I then cemented the two fuselage halves together, holding them in place until the glue cured. A fine grade wet and dry sandpaper was used to tidy up the seams between the two fuselage halves. I used Humbrol Liquid Poly to join the upper and lower wing components. This cement does its job, flowing between the two parts and forming a good bond, but it's a little more aggressive than the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement that I would normally use, but I still haven't been able to replenish my supply of that one. The wings are then slid onto the model by going under the air intake. It does require considerable force to do this, so just be careful you don't break anything in the process. Some more liquid poly can be added along the seams when that is done. The model comes with two choices of flaps, either lowered or raised. I opted to use the raised flaps on this model. They simply slot into the rear of the wing and a little cement added to hold them in place. This is then followed by the horizontal tail surfaces, which again are glued into slots. The rudder can then be added. The air intake on the nose of the model is carefully glued into place, as is the one on the underside of the fuselage. The exhaust cowling can be added here. It comes with two choices, open or closed. If you want to close the cowling, then one of the small moulded pins will need to be cut away on the inside to do so. Otherwise, if like me you want to leave it open, simply glue it in place on the top pin. I cemented the engine exhausts into their slots on the nose of the model. I masked the cockpit canopy off camera as it was a pretty fiddly step, but it looks okay now that I've done it. The bottom of the canopy frame comes as a separate part. I painted the edges black and the internal brace with the same internal green as before. I used PVA glue to attach the clear part to this as it will dry clear. More PVA glue was used to attach the front windscreen to the model, whilst poly cement was used at the rear. I've chosen to display this canopy in the closed position, but if you wanted to, you could leave it open. Now it's time to start getting the painting done. Vallejo Model Air US Air Force Olive Drab was loaded into the airbrush and then sprayed onto the nose of the model. This will form the anti-glare panel. Again, a couple of thin layers would be needed. I then left it to dry. The propeller was assembled whilst the paint was drying. The prop is cemented to the back plate and then the spinner over the top. Airfix does include the option of making this prop rotate, but you must add it before you close up the fuselage halves. I'm not fussed about this, which is why it's going to be cemented on later. Vallejo Aluminium is the next paint to be used. This will be sprayed over the entire Mustang. You will be able to notice that I've already masked the anti-glare panel on the nose that I previously painted. The wheel wells on the lower side have also been masked. I also sprayed this paint onto the landing gear legs, covers and wheels. Here, the prop spinner has dried and I'm going to paint the blades of Humbrol 33 matte black. This was thinned with Tamiya acrylic thinners to help it flow and avoid leaving brush strokes. I also did this on the wheels, taking care to avoid getting it on the silver hubs. K-Colors XW100 Gloss Varnish was now airbrushed onto the model. This will help give a smooth layer for the decals. 
Although the Vallejo aluminium looks great, it is ever so slightly grainy, and I feel that it might cause the transfers to silver. The gloss should prevent this. After a few coats, the gloss has now dried, and it's time to do the decals. I'm using Microscale, Microset and Sol as my decal solutions in this build. You can see that I've already applied the Model Alliance decals on the side of the fuselage, and they look pretty good. For the rest of the decals, they were cut from the sheet and soaked in warm water, just like the cockpit control panel from before. Microset, the blue bottle, is brushed onto the surface of the model. Then, the decals carefully applied and positioned. Microsol, the red bottle, is then brushed on top. This two-solution method helps to soften the decals into the surface details and make them look painted on. They also don't leave residue, which other solutions sometimes do. With all the decals now applied, Humbrol 49 matte clear varnish was thinned with hot water in my airbrush. The hot water should help this paint avoid leaving a white residue as it dries. I'm using this paint to protect the decals and also dull down the gloss varnish from before, as I think it's just a bit too glossy and I would like to return the model to a more metallic finish. To do this, I will apply a number of thin layers until I reach the desired look, but I'm not going to put loads on as I don't want it to go completely matte looking. With that done, it's time to remove the masking tape on the bottom of the model. It's done a good job of protecting the wheel wells. This was then followed by the tape on the anti-glare panel on the nose, then finally the tape on the cockpit canopies. Seems to have done a good job. I used Humbrol 24 Trainer Yellow Matte Acrylic to pick out the ends of the propeller blades. Now it's time to build the landing gear. The wheels are cemented onto their legs, then the leg is added to the landing gear cover. The completed leg can then be cemented into its hole. It's worth noting that you can display the landing gear raised by simply gluing the covers over the holes if you want to. Also, the landing gear is quite fragile on this model, so be careful when you're handling it. The tail wheel is glued into its hole at the rear of the fuselage. The remaining gear covers can be cemented into place. The ones here have a certain angle they sit at, so take care to get them right. Humbrol 53 Gunmetal Grey was thinned with acrylic thinners, then brushed onto the engine exhausts and the panels in those areas. I also used a very thinned down version of this paint to cover the control surfaces and a few panels here and there. It was indicated in the painting instructions on the Model Alliance decal sheet that these would have been left in bare metal, and this was my attempt at making that noticeable. Now it's time for those finishing touches. The decals were carefully cut with a sharp knife in any places where they crossed panel lines. A thin solution of my homemade panel line wash was then applied to the panel lines and details to make them stand out and give contrast. For more information on how to make this panel line wash, take a look at the tutorial I made on this topic. With the wash now dry, the prop can be pushed onto the nose of the model. I shaved some black dust off of an artist's soft pastel and then carefully brushed it onto the engine exhaust to create a realistic stain. I worked in the direction of airflow so that it would be thicker at the exhaust and thinner as it streaked down the model. I would repeat this in a few other places, particularly around any vents or refueling points, attempting to give a lightly weathered look. And as far as I'm concerned, my custom Royal New Zealand Air Force Mustang Mark IV is now complete. So what do I think of this kit? Well, it's the same kit that I built before, so there weren't any surprises. The details are good, it fits together nicely without the need for filler, and generally would be suitable for someone starting out in the hobby due to the low part count and relatively simple paint scheme. The decals included in the kit are well printed and apply to the model well, it's just a bit of a shame that Airfix included the wrong ones, but that wasn't really an issue to me. But I imagine it probably caused some headaches for other people when they realised they couldn't build the kit as advertised. The instructions are clear and easy to follow in the kit, but for the most part I pretty much did my own thing on this one. The only area this kit is let down is in those really thin parts, which break as you cut them from the sprue. I get that Airfix are trying to increase their level of quality and finesse with their kits, but it didn't quite work out on this one. 
At the time the model kit was bought back in 2019, it was retailing for £5 as a special deal, but you'd be hard pressed to find it at that price normally. Most shops are currently selling this particular kit with paints and glue for around the £10 mark at the time this video was made. I am aware however that this kit with the correct paint scheme and decals is available for about £7, but it does not include paints, brushes or cements. Hopefully they will bring back the special deal at some point as that was certainly a better price. The kit was originally tooled in 2012, which is evident from the good level of detail and fit of the parts, being up to the standard expected of more recent times. Since then it's been released in a number of paint schemes, including the Blue Nose version I have in my stash and the RAF Mustang starter set that I previously built on my channel. This is pretty much one of those backbone kits that is constantly in the airfix range in one scheme or another, so if you wanted one you should be able to find a version of this somewhere. With the kit review out of the way let's talk about the decals. This is one of the first kits on my channel to feature an aftermarket decal set, and to be honest I was pretty pleased with them. The little paint scheme booklet that came with them had nice images and information about the particular aircraft. The printing is quite good and they applied well to the model. I did notice during application that they were a little difficult to reposition, but not impossible. Also, the roundels come with separate red circles for the centres which I'm not a fan of and it reminds me of kits from the 90s, but it wasn't terrible and with some care you can get them in the middle. I did notice that the white printed on the roundels wasn't as light as I would have liked it though, being ever so slightly cream coloured, but maybe that's just me being picky. The decal sheet cost me around £7, which you might think is expensive seeing as it actually cost more than the £5 I paid for the kit. But bear in mind that the decal sheet has enough for seven different paint schemes. That actually works out at one pound a model. All I need now are six more Mustangs so I can use them all up. Finally, let's talk briefly about the paints. Being my first experience of the Vallejo Model Air range, I was quite impressed with the colours and how they went onto the model. I think you'll agree with me that they made the kit look quite good. So, on the whole, I'm pretty proud of this one. For a build I did as a side project that took less than two days, it's ended up looking really good and I have a more unique and less mainstream model to put on display. Special thanks to Shuttle Factory Models who assisted me in the research of the history on this particular aircraft and you can read a little more about it on the screen now. Shuttle Factory makes some great hand painted models over on his channel, I would definitely recommend you check him out. As always let me know what you think of my finished build in the comments below. Do you think you'd be tempted to get some aftermarket decals and try something different? If you enjoyed this one make sure to leave a like and if you're new here why not join the community? Click that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you never miss a modelling video. After all it is free. Don't forget that you can connect with me on social media, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and Discord. Finally a massive thank you to you for watching and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.